Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, please welcome Nadine Steele. I will now hand this over to uh, our speaker for today. Thank you so much, uh, Javar, for the uh, warm introduction, for having me today. And um, before we go into uh, anything else, uh, I very much acknowledge that you that we all having uh, very busy lives, and uh, you may have just rushed in from somewhere or something's going on. So. Uh, I'd like you to uh, join me in uh, a short um, exercise. We'll take around 30 to 60 seconds to center ourselves here uh, into, uh, into the session and, um, and be fully present. So for this uh, to happen, you can stay where you are right now, uh, either leave your eyes open, uh, you can also close them and just follow the um, follow what I'm, I'm talking you through. And uh, there's a quick check in after that as well. But before um, we go into any of this, if you can type in one word in chat, how are you feeling right now in this moment? What are you? How are you feeling right now? One or two words. Um, for me, it would be um, excited and also uh, a bit nervous, to be honest. This is, um, I haven't done that many events in the last few uh, uh, in the last few weeks, so um, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. But I was like, oh my god, hopefully someone's going to answer. Uh, so we've got someone who's stressed, anxious, and stressed. Okay, happy. Anyone else? Java, how are you feeling? Pulled in a few directions, anxious, hmm, like that too. Okay, thank you, nervous. Okay, thank you for taking a moment to, um, to answer those questions. So um, this will come in quite handy then for you. So again, I'm just going to talk you through 30 to 60 seconds of being, being more present here. So um, if you can put your hand either on your chest or on your tummy, and take three deep breaths, noticing while your chest rises or falls and um, that goes through that. Okay, three deep breaths. I keep to notice your body on the seat that you're occupying. Notice all the touch points between the seat and your body. Notice what that feels like. And also notice your feet on the floor. Maybe wiggle your toes. Do you know they're still there? And I'd like you to listen to the furthest away sound that you can hear. And now I'd like you to listen to the closest sound that you can hear. If you haven't yet listened to your breath, I'd like you to listen to your breath. Okay, that's it. That's it. Can you let me know in chat how you're feeling now? Tap in a word or two. Present, trauma. Grounders, great, perfect. Big comma, good. Thank you for sharing, breathing. I was distracted, feel more present now, more centered. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll let you know later on um, what we've just done and what this is, um, a, a bit more background to what we've just done. Um, Right now, I'm going to ask you to give yourself a high five. And 
I've got this actually from a coaching colleague, Ingrid Zimmermann. So I've seen her um, a few years ago, give herself some high five. And I was like, this is a genius idea. It's like, we should all be giving ourselves a bit more of a high five. Um, and I thought right now is actually a really good way of doing it. And the way I'd like you to do it on the, t uh, on the count of three is kind of to raise your hands. I know you're not all on camera, but please do it. Uh, please join me in. So you raise your hands and on the count of three, you just kind of clap together. Okay, so high fives to ourselves. One, two, three. Okay, so the high fives is for saying no to something else in order for you to be here. In order for you to be here, making time for this, you had to say no to something else. And that's worth a high five, the acknowledgement. It's worth, because it's actually quite radical. As women, as moms, mamas, we're being told to take care of everyone and everything else 24 seven, apart from ourselves. So you're a bit radical and that deserves a high five. And something else, I'm going to share my screen. That's the high five that I wanted you to give. You're also any of these things at any given time of the day. You're a mama, you're a VP of operations, you're STEM professional, a well-being officer, a neighbor, maybe an event coordinator, coordinating when your next play dates are going to be for the kids. You're a partner, director of education, entertainment executive. Um, all of these things, there's so many hats that we're all wearing. And that deserves a high five as well, apart from being radical. So thank you for deciding to spend some time um, with everyone here in the, uh, in the room today. And with that, I'd like you to officially welcome you to Mental Self-Care for Mamas with Careers. I originally had the question in, what loving thing are you going to do for yourself today? But you're already here. So that's a loving thing. It's self-care for yourself. Um, my name is Nadine Stillem. I re-energize stress mamas who are balancing me time, family life and career. I um, truly believe that mamas with careers deserve all the support, love and kindness they need and then some. Haven't we all been promised that there is a, this village um, that it needs to uh, raise a child or children and that everyone's going to support us. But obviously, specifically in the last two years during the pandemic, that was just so much more difficult to do. Um, so we deserve all of the support that we can get. I thought at this point, I also quickly just share some fun facts with you to kind of, you know, get to know me a bit better. Um, I am calling in from obviously Canada. This is the sixth country I'm living and working at. I call myself a German European living in Canada. Um, my family life is uh, here in, uh, in Vancouver. And uh, I live here with my husband and my snuggle bug of a toddler. So um, obviously it's like, why, why did I choose this particular topic? Why, why talk about this one? And um, there's a few reasons that I'd like to share with you today. One is that there's so many expectations on us. What is it to be a good mom? Good mom. What is it like to be, um, or what does it mean to be a good worker, a good professional or a leader? Um, what does it mean to combine all this? There's so many shoulds. You should be doing this. Oh, I could have been doing this. Or I should be looking out for all of these things. There's so much, like our mental load is massive. And there's all these different hats that we're wearing. And on top of that, we have our own expectations and feelings that go through, through all of these things. So it's quite complicated. And obviously, we love our little ones. We love our family life. And, we, you know, we'd wanted this to happen. But it can be super exhausting. It's tough and relentless. There's not a way you can say, oh, I'm going on a holiday for, for a week now. And I'm not going to be, um, you know, a, a working mama. It's just not, it's not a thing. So again, why this session? We cannot truly influence others or certain circumstances. There's only so much we can do. We do have a lot of power still though. We always have 
um, the power to do something. And we absolutely can ease the pressure on ourselves by being kinder to ourselves, by not adding to the pressure and the outward expectations on us. We can let go of negative feelings and shift to more positive emotions that give us that calm, peace of mind, a sense of well-being and bring joy back into our everyday life. That's why um, I decided to uh, bring the session to you. And uh, in today's session, um, everything I'm talking about is based on mental fitness training. I'm certified in mental fitness training, life coaching approaches and different self-care categories as well. I'd like you to leave the session with uh, hopefully a bit of a smile on your face, feeling lighter, calmer, and I'd also love it to be interactive. Um, when we're interacting, either in um, um, by speaking up, please don't let me be the only one speaking. <laughs> I um, uh, I would love to hear your voices as well, but we can obviously also continue chatting uh, in the chat option as well. When we do that, I'd like us to be supportive of each other, kind. This is a judgment-free zone, and I'd love for you to be able to share openly. And here's a question for you. What do you need from me and the group in the next hour to feel that you can open up, that you can get the most out of it. Maybe just type something in the chat. What do you need from me or the group, the other mamas in the group uh, for the next hour so you can be more present and take everything in? Let me just go to the chat function here and see if anything comes up. The next little while, <laughs> I'm going to uh, introduce you to what mental fitness is um, and um, there's three ways to be kind of uh, to our minds there's a uh, time for Q&A and then I have a, a gift and an invitation for you as well at the end so before um, we go further in this I would like to know from you what um, I'm coming off the screen here uh, when you feel or when you're stressed how do you feel? What are some of the things that come up for you in the moment? What are some of the thoughts that are going through your head when you're stressed? Um, the function um, in the chat. So much to do. Body is times div. Okay, let me open that up. Business increased heart rate. Shame, guilt, not being enough. Thank you for opening up so honestly determination okay pushing through i can do it frustrated okay not being good enough what impact do these thoughts have on you okay stress on myself to keep breathing difficult sleep patterns okay that the sleep patterns that has a knock-on effect on that as well right not being present with the kids it has a knock-on effect on uh, on our family life, not enough concentration, less sleep, overwhelmed, no focus. So by <clears throat> having these negative feelings, it has an impact on how we perform, it has an impact on um, how we sleep, which has an impact then uh, around that as well, um, on how maybe we work, because um, if we're not being able to focus, concentrate, etc. It has an impact on our relationships. That's quite, quite profound. Um, thank you for sharing so openly with, um, with the group. And uh, quick introduction to mental fitness. Mental fitness means that um, we, we, we are able to respond to life's challenges with positive rather than a negative mindset. And the impact of that is that we're less stressed, even though we're performing much, much better, we're more successful, we can get a lot more done, but we don't have the stress that's usually we might associate with getting a lot more done. There's this peace of mind and sense of well-being, and there's more harmony in the relationships um, around us. And all of that is, the center of it is positive in, uh, intelligence. Um, research um, is founded in positive psychology, neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and performance science. And also what plays into that is um, that hundreds of CEOs and their teams have contributed to the research. World-class athletes, Stanford students, and over half a million participants from 50 countries around the world 
all the results of this mental fitness have been uh, summarized in the New York Times bestselling uh, book, Positive Intelligence by Shazat Shamin, and it's been translated into 20 different languages. So to get mentally fit, there's three muscles, essentially only three muscles that we need to, to train um, to intercept our saboteurial thoughts, our negative thoughts, um, to um, switch to sage mode, which is the positive emotions, and self-command to command ourselves to do something and that's something that you can train so far we in our in in our lives what happens so far is we we learn to to react to certain things a certain way and that's usually a negative way as in I should have known this better or next time I do these things myself because I know how to do it so we're not delegating or um, we're maybe people pleasing and that's um, has knock-on effects on us as well. So there's a logical way of <clears throat> why we're feeling, why we're adding extra uh, pressure on us. There's 10 saboteurs, saboteur thought patterns, and they're basically energy suckers. <laughs> um, they motivate us through negative emotions. You're just pushing through it. Come on, you get and get this done and, you know, don't be a sussy, just do it. Um, and just really not acknowledging uh, any of the, the flip side of that positive, a positive way of doing it. Um, so by pushing ourselves in these certain ways, um, we might have some success, but we're not happy. So you might know um, things like, um, I've listed these 10 saboteur thoughts down here. So you uh, might be a controller or restless. For me, it's, um, I definitely have restless thoughts thoughts and um and the avoider so i i avoid uh, i avoid conflict if i think someone might not be happy with um what i have to say or that i can't say yes to something then um then simply by avoiding it the problem doesn't go away <laughs> it actually you know gets bigger and restless means i do lots of things all the time i'm busy i multitask I do lots and lots of things and that is still there but I've learned how to acknowledge what's going on and then and then switch to something more positive that's the sage mode or sage powers they give us energy it motivates us through positive emotions generate our highest success and because um, we have less stress and we have tools on how to um, move away from that we have also sustained happiness now everything what I'm talking to you about that needs that needs training because we've had years and years of thinking one particular way and there is um, boot camps and weeks worth of uh, training courses that I run to train your brain to think a different way so you're creating uh, new neural pathways but I have three different uh, things with uh, brought with me today that you can do in the moment that you can train yourself to something tangible hopefully that will uh, help you go through it so these are the three ways to be kind to our mind and one of these things is what we've done at the very the very beginning I ask you how are you feeling and I kind of anticipated what was what was the case, what you confirmed in chats that you were kind of rushing to make this meeting. There's lots of, you know, life and, and your career is, is happening outside of this meeting. Um, so I brought you to center, be more centered and calmer in this moment. And that's one already one of the things that you can do in any given moment. Thanks. So we're, we're going straight back in. So what I did at the beginning uh, of the session was to pause and to recenter. Um, and it saves us a lot of energy, time and resources. If we find ourselves in some sort of negative thought pattern, um, we're frustrated or angry or flustered or this mom guilt happening, whatever you call it, the longer we stay in this, the longer we're staying in, this, in it and nothing actually changes. We basically give ourselves a timeout and we recenter ourselves in order to move on 
to not waste any time or energy, which we have, frankly, probably not a, a lot about. Um, so how this works is um, by we, we're watching out for cues and triggers. So some of you mentioned already in the chat earlier that you realize what's happening to your body. That's a really good access point. Does your heart rate increase? Do you feel like you may not be able to speak or breathe or swallow properly? Do you feel frozen in the spot? Do you feel you can't um, concentrate? There's just like maybe too much going on. That's a really good cue that some sort of um, saboteur, saboteurial thoughts are going on. It doesn't really matter what's going on. You just know you're stressed. You need a timeout. Um, a timeout can be literally leaving your chair, going to a different room. If you're at work, what I think always helps is needing to have a, a, a nature break. Hey, I need to use the washroom. No one ever can say anything about that. <laughs> um, and uh, it could also be, you know, just staying where you are, but maybe consciously breathing. So what I've done earlier with you is what uh, in mental fitness terms, we call PQ reps, little um, or short repetitions of uh, short exercises. They're usually 10 seconds each. Um, and um, they're small mental fitness mindfulness exercises that help us not concentrate, like bring our brain from concentrating on something negative to concentrating um, on something that's neutral. And it, in, um, it uh, involves all our senses. So it's like, what do you breathe, hear, see, notice, feel? Um, and uh, there's lots of different exercises there. A few of them you've learned earlier when we um, started the session. And there's some that you can do while you're sitting, some while you're going for a walk, some where uh, no one else is present. But there are also exercises that you can do while you're actually talking with someone in a meeting or you're face to face with them. You're looking them in the face and you're still doing those exercises in order for maybe not be triggered by something that they're saying or by the topic or by something else that's going on around you. So you're more focused on the conversation. So the first tangible tip for me from me for you today is to pause and recenter. It takes practice, but it's something that you can do um, very practically in the moment. So the second step, before I move on to the second step, is um, actually when, say, our children are... Um, our, our children are going through some tough times, say at work, uh, not at work, <laughs> they're not at work yet, um, but say at school, they're frustrated about something that didn't quite work out their way. Um, they might be angry with themselves or at something. Uh, maybe they're anxious about a test that's coming up. Um, how, do you, how do you usually react when, when they're that way? Questions, ask many questions, ask some questions about their feelings, how some process listen, reflect feelings back to them, validate of our physical support or comfort. Wonderful. Okay. Always there for them. So supporting words. Okay. Okay. Thank you for, for sharing. So we're supporting them. We're compassionate. Okay. Yeah. Pause and breathe. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're supporting them. And for us, really, as adults, <laughs> why, why should that stop when we're children? So my next thing, my next tip I have for you when you're feeling stressed in the moment is be kind and love. Why should being compassionate stop when we're children? Or why should it stop when we're talking with our partners or best friends and we offer that to them? We can offer that to ourselves as well. So be kind and love is the second tangible um, tip that I have for you. And the reason behind it is that um, it releases those feel-good hormones in our brain. And it makes us feel 
happy from the inside immediately. And the way you do it is by answering the question in the moment, what's the most loving, kind and compassionate thing I could say to myself right now? What's the most loving, kind and compassionate thing I can say to myself right now? And think about a situation either from today, um, right now, that's something that you're going through or something recently where you thought, oh, I could have done with a bit of support. Um, thank you. Or, or even share in on, uh, on chat if that's um, more uh, something that feels like, like you, you, are, you are enough. Yeah. In that sense, it means I am enough. I am enough. I have this. Yeah. I'm doing the very best I can. Like, say it to yourself. So if you're looking like in, in the mirror, say it to yourself, right? I am doing enough. You're doing the best. What else can you say? It's tough, isn't it? We're saying these words probably like really quickly to someone else. And then when it comes to ourselves, it can be it can be quite challenging at times. Yeah, Robin, well, thanks for sharing. What do I need from me in this moment? And then finding a way to get that, even if it's ask me, if it means asking for help. Yeah. Asking for help is a strength using all your resources. I'm doing great. I'm okay. Yeah. Exactly. This is not about not acknowledging that there are tough things, right? There, there can still be tough things, and there definitely are. But it's also like giving yourself that, that hug in words, or you're actually hugging yourself. I, I, I know people who, you know, you work with positive affirmations and mantras, and they're looking themselves in the mirror when, when they say those words and give themselves a hug. Hey, I love myself. You are enough, or I am enough, right? <clears throat> so in the moment, what's the most compassionate thing that you can say to yourself? And those are like two things that you can say, to, uh, you can do in the moment when you're feeling stressed. The third one is to reflect and celebrate. So that's one one step that um, maybe takes a bit longer and um, something that you can do over and, and over again. And the reason you're doing it is because it increases your feelings of confidence, calm and compassion with ourselves. So again, we're looking at how are we cheering on ourselves? How are we building ourselves up? How are we recognizing and acknowledging all the amazing, cool things that we're up to? And that every tiny step forward, even if it's a tiny one, is a step in the right direction that you want to move. So again, the way you're accessing this is to reflect on, journal, or think about, even answer out loud or share on social media once a week, Friday afternoons. Hey, this is what I'm celebrating about myself this week. Other ways of doing that are, what are my wins this week? What am I proud of? And over time, this will build the confidence, calm and compassion. And, you know, so that you're your own fiercest cheerleader. Hey, I am this cool. I can do all these things. I am this, uh, this strong woman. Because sometimes we just brush it off. But if you truly believe it from, from the inside, that's, that's the full strength that comes on there. So again, I'm, I'd love to hear from you. What are you celebrating about yourself? Or what's a win this week? It's Wednesday, hump day. Hey, there's already been a few things that, are, uh, that have happened this week. What's something that you're celebrating about yourself? Or what's a win this week already? Mm -hmm. uh, so what was your favorite part or highlight of your day? Beautiful. Yes. Sharing maybe even over dinner. Is that something you're doing 
uh, in the evenings. Yeah, interesting option, a bit deeper discussion. Exactly. So you're reflecting back, it's like, hey, apart from what, what was going on, but going deeper, what was your favorite part of today? And it, it's very specific in a way as well. Um, and you're concentrating on the positive things that are coming up, right? To recognize it's so often that we're talking about all the negative things that are going on, but what's actually something that was really great today? Um, uh, a win. I quit working after eight hours and got outside and played with my little guy. Woo, woo, woo. That's wonderful. That's great. Perfect. High fives. <laughs> But in general, I'm a positive person, no matter how, how hot the situation seems. Okay. Yeah. What else? Come on, share with me. <clears throat> a win from me. Hang on. What, what, what's something uh, that felt really good? Uh, <laughs> I had a really good night's sleep last night <laughs> with the toddler. That's not always uh, that's not always the case, and I think that was a win um, for for my health as well. And uh, I think on something that um, makes me feel a bit more um, present in the moment. It's a kind of a, a power dress. So that's a that's a win. It's like I tried it out, uh, even there doing it. Um, and then Carolyn shares, I try to find at least one thing per day that makes me confident, whatever that is. Wow. Um, what makes you feel confident? Uh, Dara went for a bike ride and walk over the weekend. Yeah, get out of the house. Even just like five minutes, such a, such a win. Um, went to the gym every day this week at 5.45. Wow. wonderful okay I have the knowing I have packed a good lunch okay our first weekend away from our daughter this weekend she had a great time with grandma oh that's definitely a win that's still on that's still on the cards for me <laughs> um okay wonderful thank you for sharing uh, your wins and what works for you in your household and that's just that's amazing perfect so these are the three ways to pause and recenter so that's when you catch yourself in the moment just stop change locations or be conscious um, that something is happening and do one of those short exercises breathing exercise or notice take in your uh, take in your senses or sorry, uh, activate your senses, then be kind and love. What's the most compassionate thing you can say yourself in the moment? Again, that's for you to be supportive, to release those uh, feel-good hormones um, as well and, um, and shift from the negative thoughts. As soon as you're in positive mode, you can be more creative with uh, finding solutions around it. You feel more centered um, your stress levels are going way down and you'll be able to deal with whatever situation you have with a more with more focus and clarity and calm, obviously. And the third step is to reflect and to, to celebrate. And uh, with that, um, I think we're just the 45 minutes in 40 minutes, okay. Um, I would say I'm open to questions now and then um, at the end share with you what... Um, uh, a gift that I brought along. So let me just stop here. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, that was a really great presentation. Um, a lot of really great advice in there and like little bits and pieces that we could, you know, all talk about. Um, so I'm going to open the floor to everyone. Um, so if you have any questions, please unmute yourself. Um, and uh, ask your question, or you can raise your hand, whatever you feel like is comfortable. You can also put it in the chat. Um, and, and yeah, we can, we can get to know our speaker, or we can also talk about any of the uh, uh, topics. I have a question. Um, 
Is there something, um, is there something to putting your hand over your heart and your stomach when you're doing that breathing exercise? Um, it's, uh, again, to in, engage your senses. So you feel your body, your body rise and go down. And um, it uh, helps with um, like taking that, that deeper, deeper breath. It's not for everyone. Sometimes you just, some people are very um, in tune and they like putting their hand on their heart. Um, mm -hmm. Even when it's um, just to kind of tune in more to your, to your heart and putting a, a focus on it rather than in your head. Um, that's something that comes out of um, the coaching, coaching practices when um, you're a lot in your head um, mm -hmm. and you're trying to tune into what your heart is telling you or what is your body telling you. Um, so that's kind of helping put the focus somewhere mm -hmm. else rather than in your head, coming out of your head. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, what I really liked about that is how um, you brought it down to the toes. And I felt very uh, grounded. Um, I felt very like calm, but like, I felt like the stress that was up here was then like, kind of released slowly. And then I pushed it into the earth kind of thing. I don't know if other people felt that way. But I thought that was really, really nice. Um, yeah, I, I've never done that before. And I think I'm going to do that more often. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just going to be sitting down all the time, <laughs> just with my hand over my heart, just getting grounded all the time. It's, it's, it was really nice, actually. Uh, specifically the one, I mean, those are things that you can do while you're in a meeting, while you're maybe in an interview or, you know, mm. what's going on? Oh, you wiggle your toes. No one will ever know, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you just have your, your hand here and you're breathing in. Um, so that's, that's really good for doing it in the moment um, as well. And mm. no one's really put it like that. It's kind of just, I don't know, raining yeah. down or, you know, mm -hmm. you're draining it into the... Yes. Being, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have a question by Robin. Um, it's in the chat. So I'm going to read it out loud. So what are some strategies to silence the guilt shame thoughts i often feel guilty for prioritizing myself sometimes i sometimes feel like any free time i have should be spent with my kids or my partner any tips for reinforcing and reminding people to put yourself first yeah <laughs> it's it's a different it's a difficult one for sure um one of the things is definitely to be um to be uh grounded to get yourself out of that just like do those little exercises and and put that in and then set um uh, expectations and boundaries as well so if you're spending time with your family let people know it's like i'm switching off from work right now that's my calendar i'm no longer available on my phone or by email this is what i'm doing now um, so boundary setting around it um, is as well. Um, maybe even helping or getting the support from other people around you as well and saying, hey, I, I need to be, uh, like, help me, help take me out of from, from work mode, uh, dear partner, for instance. And uh, we're going out now. I may later, um, you know, not feel like it, but please help me get out. Um, anticipating as well so um and that's very difficult uh, or different from person to person but um and anticipating those kind of feelings of 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 guilt might come up later when you are um say wanting to switch off from work it's like these are some of the feelings that might come up this is what i'm going to do about it so by taking kind of the wind out of the sails up front, um, that might already uh, help as well. So these are the type of thoughts that might, might come up. I might feel guilty later, not really wanting to, uh, but um, I'm going to force myself, switch everything off and, and actually go and leave, right? Um, I hope that helps. There's lots around it, but it really depends always on the uh, situation. Uh, we have a hand raised, so I'm going to let the person sure. unmute and ask away. 
Well, hi, Nadine. Thanks for a great session. Um, I just wanted to just add something to, to Robin there. And that is, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that we, we forget is that we're actually a person in our own right. And as, as human beings, we need um, time for ourselves, as well as time for our partners, as well as time for our children. And we can't be doing all of those things all of the time. So I think, you know, one of the ways that I certainly um, learned to deal with, with that and not feel guilty when I was doing what I needed to do for me was, was the knowing that I need to do what I need to do for me so that I can be doing things for other people too. And, and that my partner needs time for me, my children need time for me, but they don't need time for me 24 seven. So there's also time for me too. Um, okay. and, I, and, and, and that was something that I was told by a pediatrician really early on after I'd had my son, he kind of read me the right act. And basically it, it was something that stood me in an enormous amount of stead throughout my working, having a successful career and, and bringing up my children because if I hadn't applied that, I think everything would have fallen over, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. so I think when, you know, Robin, when you, it, it, it is hard, Robin. And, and when you're feeling like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Just remember, hey, I'm also a person and, and, and I need to do for me so that I can do for others. Exactly. Alone time is so, so important. Um, and and doing, do, like, you need to fill your own cup. Um, because if you're, if you're constantly with everyone else, then it's like you're giving, 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 giving. And where, how are you going to, like, what are you going to give from if your cup isn't, isn't filled? Um, so I, it's not easy. It's not easy. But it's one step, one day, one occasion at a time. And it'll, and it'll get easier, Daryl, how, like, it, it took a, obviously quite a, quite a moment to get to that um, um, realization and to push it through but I, I can you maybe elaborate was it yeah I think when, when he told me that I just immediately stopped you know trying to you know pull myself in every direction I just thought you know he's right mm -hmm. I am a person in my own right I need time for me and and then you know and specifically this thing that you know society put so much expectations on mothers. We're supposed to be everything to everybody and particularly everything to our children and be there 24 seven for them. Mm -hmm. But in reality, we're not actually helping them by being there 24 seven. They also have to grow up into being competent, capable human beings as well, right? And so by overdoing everything, it, it actually in many ways can be detrimental. And, and the same thing with guilt, you know, we feel guilty and guilt is actually in some ways, uh, this is kind of a bit of a, hard thing to say but I always viewed guilt as a as an in, in, indulgent emotion in the sense that I'm indulging in my guilt um, and, and 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 if I feel guilty then I try and compensate and by compensating I invariably compensate in the wrong way and I then actually have something to feel guilty about because now I've really gone and done something that's not helpful to anybody so so exactly. I, I learned very early on just forget about guilt um, and do things as you need to do them um and it is important to take that, that it's it's this rabbit hole that i talked about earlier yeah. right you're going down um and you're not getting out of your out of your head um but there's like there's so much to to say about this um this topic alone i was like oh maybe i should do a session on mom guilt <laughs> um well, 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 exactly. you know the, the other thing too is that if you we often feel guilty about working but but yeah. you know when you're working you're working you're not with your children so if you, instead of feeling guilty about it concentrate on your work and then when you go home concentrate on your children and not trying to do everything all this mm. at the same time doesn't really help yeah, unfortunately, that isn't always the case. I haven't been the case um, at times in the last two years when yeah, kids no, couldn't go to school and you had to do all of these things or at least try um, and, and, you know, fail by doing so because you can't be perfect in, you know, two 24 hour jobs. But yeah, it's it's very, very complex. So um, well, well, that's exactly it. You can't, if you make each of those separate jobs into 24 hour sevens, I know during the pandemic, it feels like that. Um, but, but you know, then it just it, it just it's, it's not possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Dara. You're welcome. We also have a comment in the chat uh, that links mm -hmm. to this uh, discussion right here. It's um, uh, 
I find this especially hard the last two years because of all my sports and social activities were canceled. And I think that's a really big point as well is that a lot of the things that we relied on to keep us kind of centered um, were canceled. And so it's hard to find other activities and virtual socialization is not the same at all. And so I, it, that's also a really great point that was brought up in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you um, all for chiming in and, and bringing those points. It's definitely not, not easy. Um, so I hope the, the three points that I brought on earlier can bring some relief in the moment um, and, and help just to be, to be more compassionate with ourselves, show ourselves some, um, some love and kindness rather than uh, maybe inadvertently add to, to the stressors. Um, that we're, we're all exposed to. There's just so much going on. Um, and um, I know we're, we're coming to the, to the end of the session. So I um, kind of just want to quickly share something else with you. Um, and that is um, a, a, a gift and an invitation, <laughs> really. Um, I have a, a free seven-day guide, Soul Nurturing Self-Care for Stressed uh, Mamas. Um, so on nadinestiller.com, um, you can sign up and you'll receive pocket-sized joy daily to your inbox. And um, that's on nadinestiller.com. My, my gift to you if you'd like to have little little things show up um, in your inbox to work through, similar to what we've done today, just a bit more, uh, more in detail. And um, I think that's... Uh, that's that from from my that's side. a really great idea i love i love that you know daily daily thing that's a really awesome idea um sometimes like there are certain apps that you can also download that try to you know send you reminders or and things like that but i i really like what you did there that's really awesome um so this uh we are now at the end of our event. Thank you so much, uh, Nadine, for coming in today and speaking to us and providing us with all of these uh, great advice. Um, I, I really appreciate it and I think our audience does as well. Um, so thank you so much for uh, coming today. Thank you everyone for joining us today uh, for this brown bag event. Um, please uh, continue uh, coming to our uh, Squiss events. Um, we will have more uh, coming up. We also have the Wonder Woman networking event uh, coming up on March 9th uh, for uh, women in STEM. Uh, so that's a really big event coming up. So um, if you guys would like to join us, please uh, go to our website, squiz.ca slash events to uh, sign up and register for that event as well. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the event soon. So yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's been wonderful.